Okay, guys, here we go. The very first question. So, what do we have? One, a potter believes that 20% of pots break whilst being fired in a kiln. Pots are fired in batches of 25. A, let X denote the number of broken pots in a batch. Okay, so initially from the statement, we can assume that this is a binomial distribution. Why? Because we're given the number of batches, which is 25, and we're given a probability of pots breaking, so an actual p-value, which is 20%. So instantly, just say n is 25, and the probability is 20%, so 0.20. Okay, so far so good. Now, a batch is selected at random. Using a 10% significance level, we're going to get to the second, find the critical region for a two-tailed test of the potter's belief. Now, you should state the probability in each tail of your critical region. All right, so this isn't so bad. Now, all you have to do really is, um, given as two tails, this means that we should consider, let's say, a bell curve or straight line. Either is fine. Okay? This means that from each tail of the test, if we split this directly in half, we're looking at the edge. If it's 10%, we take half of 10%, which is 5 because it's two-tailed, and we, and we allocate 5% on this region and 5% on this region. Now, if we assume that the middle is 50% because it's symmetrical, that means the first 5% is here, and the last 5% starts at 95. We only want probabilities that are less than 5% or greater than 95%, but you want to be as close as possible to 5. So what do we do? So well, all we do now is look at the, the binomial distribution table and just find... Look at n equals 25 and p is 0 0.20 and just find the closest values. That is not that is up to 5% and just above 95%. So let's do it. So here we go. So look at n equals so far, initially always find n equals 25 and then p equals uh, 0 0.20 and n equals 25. So we just we just scan down this column. So up to 5%, so in this case we need to go, it needs to be no less than 0 0.05. So yep, this will be the tightest one, so this represents x is 1. So yeah, just to be clear, you, they also tell you more information. The tabular value is probability that the, the random variable x is less than or equal to points x. So this means here initially that this x is 1, so at this point it will be x greater than or equal 1, which equals 0 0.0. 274 so we're going to keep this down and the second one let's go up to 95 percent all right here we go so this is just above nine percent and the tabulated value is eight so it'd be probability x is less than equal eight which is zero point what was it again nine five three two okay so now all we have to do really is just plot this down so looking back in the curve so this means that up to eight so this knows how it knows how it says less than or equal we want the greater and equal version, so we just basically one minus this term and just switch this to a nine because this goes up to eight. We want nine onwards. So let me just write this down. So up to here, this is probability x is less than or equal one, with exact probability of zero point zero two seven four. At this point, this is probability x greater than or equal nine. Okay, the left hand side is greater is less than or equal eight. And that is a 1 minus this term. So 1 minus uh, 0 0.9532 minus 0.9532. And that's it. You should be done then. Two. And yep, that's and, th and this small region represents exactly 0 0.0468. So, so ultimately, we can say that the actual critical regions, which are the shaded part, lie between everything less than one so so it will be the number of batches from zero to one so again zero less than equal x less equal one two actually i should just use the word and because it's only the shade regions it's my pen and from here nine onwards so be nine less than equal x less than equal 25 because that's how many goes up to and I said this should be the end of the solution. That's what we want. We want the values x that fit along this, that are less than 5% or are just over 95% or the, the remainder 5%. Okay. Okay, here we go. Part B, guys. So the potter aims to reduce the proportion of pots which break in the kiln by increasing the size of the batch fired. He now fires pots in batches of 50. He then chooses a batch at random and discovers that there are 6 pots which broke whilst being fired in the kiln. 
Okay, just to make a quick note here, yeah, from the previous question, we had a binomial distribution of, of 25, batches of 25, with a actual proportion of 20%, which he believed would break. So we can in instantly state that now the distribution changed to uh, for n equals 50, because now there are 50 batches, and the proportion won't, would actually still be 20%. It's not going to be 6 out of 50. Why? Because this is how much he actually discovers. So this is not a rate. This is a rate, okay? This is how much he actually discovers, which is something different. That's that's going to be a property of finding if this falls in line. So now let's have a look. So test at the 5% levels of significance whether or not there is evidence that increasing the number of pots in a batch has reduced the percentage of pots that break whilst being fired in the kiln. Just to recap, 6 over 50 is, is the same as 12%. So technically it's under 20%. So we need to check if this statement is, is actually true. Now, first things first, we need to lay down our hypothesis. So we can say firstly that the initial hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis, we can say that the probability according to our binomial distribution that the, the pots that are expected to break were 20%. However, with the new information, we found out that it could be 12%. So we're going to test whether or not the probability that actually breaks is under 20%. So here we go. That's all we do. The figure is always the same. You're just testing whether this is true or actually less than that. That's all it is. And now to confirm this, we need to test the values they assumed, which was 6. So we're going to follow this lead, the H1, with the same direction. This means the property that x is less than or equal 6. And then we just, well, refer to the binomial distribution with, with, the, with, with n equals 50. Anyway, guys, so let's whip out the tables and let's have a look. So going to n equals 50, which is down. So keep going down your tables until you find the right proportions. So here we go, n equals 50. And we're looking at 20%. So let's change to red. Okay, so when n equals 6, so when x equals 6, so this would be probability x is less than equal 6, we should get exactly 0 0.101034. Okay, let's write this down. So 0 0.1034. Now what does this tell us? Well, we only firstly reject the null hypothesis if the p-value, the probability, is less than 5%. If this is the case, this is just like a general like rule of thumb. Then we reject the null hypothesis. Okay, so in this case, this one is not less than 5%. So we can say there is insufficient evidence, or there is not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So what does this actually tell us? So if we can't reject it, if there's ins insufficient evidence to actually reject it, that means we're going to accept it. So we're going to assume that the property remains constant at 20%. So we have to agree with the Potter's belief. So that's what it really means. So ultimately, we can say that there is, there is, a no, there is no reason to, to assume the new beliefs. So we can say whether or not there is evidence to increase the number of posts in the batches reduce. So all we do is just pretty much say there is no evidence and then copy in that statement again. So there is no evidence that increase in known posts has reduced the percentage of posts. And that's it, that break. So copy all of this, but it replaces with the word no evidence. And we should be good. And just checking the mark scheme, it always helps. There's various other routes you could take. So they say no evidence that increasing the batch size has reduced the percentage of broken pots. So this is one way of writing it, or you could even say evidence that there is no change.